So it's not every day that in the studio I have two guitars that are literally within $50 of each other. When PRS launched their SE594, they sent me one to check out. I put it through the paces, did some videos with it, and thought it was a really solid guitar for the money. So once I started playing that guitar in videos, a lot of you started asking about the Epiphone Limited Edition 59 Les Paul. And this is the thing companies like Gibson do from time to time, where they'll take a solid bass instrument and do upgrades directly from the factory, like improved electronics and burst bucker pickups. So what I thought would be really fun and kind of fair was to create a track using both of these guitars, and both guitar will be playing the same part back and forth, so you'll get a real in-context sort of comparison of the two. And of course, later, we'll compare them side by side, but I thought this would be really fun to do. So I'm going to recommend you put some headphones on so you can really hear the guitars, and I'll put the PRS in the left side of the track and the Epiphone in the right side. So for the clean sounds, I'll be using my 65 Fender Bassman, and for the dirty tones, I'll use my 73 Marshall Super Lead. And I know what you're going to ask. You're going to ask about the settings. I'm keeping them the same for every amp. I'm just swapping the cable to lay the parts down. That's what you're hearing. And of course, we'll dive deeper later in the video. I'll make that track available for you in the links below, as well as a special link to try hundreds of guitar lessons on my website, workingclassguitar.com, free for 14 days, just a low monthly cost after that. Jump in there, check it out, have some fun. I guarantee there's something good in there for you. All right, let's hear these guitars. Let's do it. So I'm sure you heard some differences, and I wouldn't say that one is better than another. They're obviously different, and that's going to continue to be revealed as we do the video and do some more side-by-side -side stuff. But let's jump into me playing some more solo stuff over that track, and I'm going to use both guitar, play the same licks, but I'm going to use my divided by 13 RSA 23 amp. Now, that amp is going to be more of like sort of a Marshall-y, Voxy type of thing combined. Really, really cool sound. I gained it up. And what I really want you to listen to is how the guitars compress and push the amp in a different way. We'll talk about specs on the pickups and other stuff too that might sort of contribute to that. But for now, just listen to me playing the same soloing licks over top of the track with each guitar. <laughs> So the first thing I noticed sonically was output. Now the Epiphone's bridge humbucker measures out at 8.5 and the neck pickup at 8.2. But more than the output that's associated with them is the tone. This sounds more like a classic Gibson to me. Uh, the mids feel not as pronounced, uh, has a nice sort of glassy top end. The low end is oddly enough not unbearable. It's actually quite smooth in this guitar, but we'll hear that when we do a side-by-side -side comparison. So what's interesting about the PRS is it measures at 8.7 on the bridge and 7.6 on the neck. But I don't really pay attention to those numbers too much. I really sort of pay attention to how it responds to the amp and the tonal characteristics. Now, PRS pickups, in my experience, generally are a little more mid-forward. They're aggressive in the mids. Uh, Paul tunes them in a way that he feels like someone might already do it uh, when the the track is being mixed. But what I found is this guitar really pushed the amp and compressed it in a different way. You may like that, you may not. Either way, you gotta take the guitar for what it is and adjust it accordingly, or adjust the amp accordingly, because every guitar is different, and that's what we need to consider. All right, so let's hear both of these now with a clean tone through the Fender Bassman. I won't change the settings. All I'm gonna do is pull the volume pedal down, swap the cable, and change guitars. I will tell you, I'm gonna do a bit of video editing to keep the video moving along so you don't see me fumbling with the cable. But honest to goodness, that's what we're gonna do, and that's what we wanna hear is the subtle nuances between each guitar. <laughs> 
So let's hear it. So we're only comparing humbucker tones here, but what I should mention is that the PRS does allow you to engage the coil tap on the tone controls of both the bridge and neck humbuckers. Now it says coil tap on the website. If you wanna argue about coil split or coil tap, have a blast. But that's more of the perceived value with the SE594. I wanted to make sure we covered that before we went on. So like I said, when I cranked up the divided by 13 for the soloing part of that track, I could hear even more interesting stuff happening between these two guitars. I'm gonna isolate that so we can just hear them. I'll play the same licks on each guitars in the neck, bridge, and middle positions. Listen to how the guitars affect the amp. That's a really, really important thing of this demo. It's not crucial to your decision in purchasing it. It's just a fun thing to hear how two instruments can affect an amp in such a way. Let's hear it. So when it comes to the sound of the instrument, yes, pickups are important. I definitely pay attention to that when I'm looking for a new instrument. But the most important thing for me is neck shape and feel. I would say that both of these guitars have very chunky C-shaped necks. So you want to be aware of that and consider it before you make your purchase if you're not getting a chance to play it before you buy it. The neck on the Epiphone is big and it is chunky, but it has some flatness to it. The shoulder feels a little rounded and a little bit of flatness on the back. Overall, it's very round, but it is chunkier and beefier than my 59 Murphy Lab for sure. The neck on the PRS is a little rounder overall. It seems more symmetrical than the Epiphone and it is chunkier than its core model 594 for sure. It feels good, but it is also gloss finished. If that's not a thing for you, you wanna consider that as well because the Epiphone is satin finish all the way around. Couple of other things to note, the Epiphone does come with a Gibson style case. And the PRS comes with a gig bag. Now it's not a huge deal to me that one comes with a case and one comes with a bag. I use bags more than cases anyway, but you wanna know that going in when you're sort of perceiving the value of these instruments. So be aware of that. People always love to talk about the weight of the guitar nowadays. I remember my uncle had a 70s Les Paul Custom that was probably like 11 pounds, and I didn't care. I thought it was awesome. Of course, you know, I wasn't playing it for three hours on a strap or having it on my knee for a long time, so I understand the fixation on the weight of the guitars nowadays. And what's cool is with a lot of these companies, particularly Sweetwater, who we work with a lot, they post the weight of each guitar, and it varies from instrument to instrument. The PRS comes in at 8.3 pounds. 
And this particular Epiphone is 8.6 pounds, so just a bit heavier than the PRS. And again, it varies from instrument to instrument, so make your choice accordingly. So the PRS actually has the belly cut right here, which could actually contribute to the weight of the guitar a little bit, but some people actually just like the aspect of that shape and that design and how it sits against your body. The Epiphone is a classic traditional design. It is cut just like the Les Paul would be and should be. I actually prefer this against my body. I was never a huge fan of the belly cut, um, but I can play a guitar that has one and not really complain about it. Either way, those are little things that might sway you one way or another when making a choice. So PRS, regardless of the price point, is always known for their finishes and their tops, right? So this is a high gloss finish all the way around, top, back, sides, and neck, and it does have a maple veneer top. The Epiphone is a satin finish. Now they call it a VOS style finish. Frankly, I just think that's marketing mumbo jumbo for a satin finish. Now they do say that there is a triple A grade flame top on this as opposed to a veneer. I don't know to what you know depth that flame top is, but they claim it's a real top and not a veneer. So when we're balancing these, you know, apples to apples or apples to oranges sort of situations, these are the things that might push us in one direction when we make our choice. This is why the guitar industry is fun to me. I still love it after all these years. You take these big brands that are putting out these instruments that are really, really solid values for the money. They're competitively priced towards one another and they're full of features. Both of them are. It's up to us to kind of figure out which way we're going to lean when we want to make a purchase. And each company is really staying true to their methodology too. I mean, you have the Epiphone, more traditional look. They've upgraded the top and the electronics. And of course, PRS has its veneer flame top because it looks fantastic. I mean, on camera, it's just, it's pretty killer looking. And they give you a multitude of sounds in the pickup department as well. So if you're playing around for a bunch of different sounds, single coils and humbuckers, you might look at the PRS, but you want that more traditional guitar with the upgraded electronics with the classic feel of a Les Paul, maybe you're going to lean towards the Epiphone. Like I said, since I had both guitars, I figured why not make a video? I know some folks are going to like this, especially if they got about a thousand bucks or a little bit more with tax and fees to, uh, to spend. I think one of these is probably a really solid choice, but tell me what you guys think about either of these. I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments. And don't forget, you can check these guitars out in the links below. It's in the video description. Don't forget to download the track, subscribe to the channel, check out my website for lessons, like the video if that's all you can do, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.